Oh, yeah. Okay, hello, I'm Justin McShane. We're here at Axion uh, Analytical Labs in Chicago. It is November 13th. I'm going to show you two ways that you can take an 05 uh, BAC result uh, and change it to above the legal limit, above 08. One way you're going to be able to tell definitely some, that someone messed around with the raw data. The other way it will be impossible unless you have the raw data, uh, unless you really know what you're doing. Both ways are very easy to do. For the undertrained person, it won't take that much time, just a couple clicks in the mouse. So the first thing that we take a look at, this is ChemStation, just so we can show that we're not monkeying around. Uh, here we can see it's uh, GC ChemStation uh, revision B0301, um, and it's the most current version that's uh, available uh, out in the market today. So what we did is we took certified reference materials and we uh, spike them purposefully with known amounts of ethanol, acetone, and, and propanol. The ethanol uh, standard that we put in was supposed to be a 0 0.05 um, from USP grade ethanol. And we can see that's what occurred here by um, taking a look at the, uh, at the end result uh, as we go through this. And I'll narrate it um, so we can make sure that everything's fine. So the report, of course, is the, is the printed chromatogram most of the time, if you're lucky, as a criminal defense lawyer uh, who specializes in DUI, you will get the uh, you will get the chromatogram and the chromatogram alone. But that's only after a lot of belly aching comes through. So the couple things that we want to take a look at is uh, we want to be good scientists first, and then I'll show you how to be an evil scientist uh, that's involved with it. Is that what we have here? Is we have the first uh, unmanipulated data that goes along with it. So this would be the chromatogram that you would get um, if you did the auto-integrate, meaning that the machine does follows its method the way that it's validating what it's supposed to do. A couple things to note, of course, uh, we're labeling the ethanol. This is the acetone and the ethanol. The red marks or integration marks are where the baseline, the computer has calculated the baseline to be. Everything looks good, everything's fine with that. Then we go to the next page, which will have the quantification. The quantification, as we can see here, ethanol, is 5.12, E minus 2, meaning that we have to move it two decimal points, which is what we would expect to see with a certified reference material. So it would be uh, 0.0512 uh, in our particular case. So it's important to take a look at it. So the first thing that you would want to do, if you wanted to monkey around with the result and raise someone's BAC, quite simply is this. What you do is you go over to the graphic user interface on the raw data that's here. And the first thing that you would do is you would go to integration. Um, and then uh, what you would do is you would uh, go to uh, draw baseline. Hold on one second. Integration, draw baseline. And what you're going to do, of course, is the way that the internal standard works is less area of the end propanol results in a higher calculation of the ethanol. It's just inversely proportional like that. So what we would do is we would take the baseline and we would move it up. And that way, we calculate less area under the peak. Less area under the peak means it must be a higher ethanol. So if you remember, it's a 0 0.05 is what it really is. So what we'll do is we'll go here and we'll, uh, we'll take the draw baseline function that you just saw me select. And we're just going to arbitrarily pick that area there. Now, as you can see, um, being, uh, being visual people that, of course, we are, two things happen on, on the actual chem station data that's here. First thing that happens is you can see the red mark um, that, that's indicated right there. That means that I drew the baseline to be that area. And then as we uh, focus uh, in drawing closer, we can see exactly what I did to draw the baseline that's there. Um, and then you can see the sideways mark that says area 0.305. So there's going to be your two telltale signs in which results here, because now I've, de I've decreased the area under the peak, when you do the chromatogram, it's going to result in a higher BAC amount. So remember, this is the graphical representation of the reported event. Now, when we take a look here, you're going to be able to tell, as a sophisticated criminal defense lawyer, hey, someone's jimmy with the area for the end propanol, which is our internal standard, because we have a sideways mark that's right there. That means that the area has been uh, integrated uh, by manual um, means. And you can also see the red mark. So there's going to be the two telltale signs, if you're sophisticated enough to notice them. 
you go on to the next page and we would expect, and exactly what happened here, is that we had an O5, we moved it to a 0.13 ethanol result. So you're saying to yourself, okay, I get it, there's two things, and I, as long as those two things are there, then I should be able to tell someone monkeyed with it. Well, I can make those two things disappear. The first one's really easy. All you do is go into report, specify report, then you're gonna go over to signal options, then you're gonna tell it to remove the tick mark and the baselines. Remember, uh, without those, we're not gonna be able to tell on the printed chromatogram whether or not someone has uh, manually integrated that area. So we go down and we take a look. This is what we would print out. You see no baseline. Remember, we drew the baseline approximately right there, but you can't tell it's there, but you still have that telltale sideways mark. So if you're sophisticated, you'll be able to tell, hey, someone jimmy with this, and you can see that the, uh, that the end result uh, that's here in terms of the amount is uh, 0.13. So now we go into do something a little bit more devious. We're going to set back the parameters to what they originally are, just to show, um, just to show that we that we're starting back from a, a neutral baseline that's there. And well, as a computer, I hit auto integrate, which will move it back down to the reporting level of an O5. We hit print report, so we get the chromatogram at the end of it. You can see everything's normal. Uh, we haven't changed the underlying data whatsoever. Um, and there's no baseline, so we take a look and we see, aha, we're back to the O5, which is what it's supposed to be. So now you get to the point with, okay, there's no sideways mark that's there, it's O5. How can you do this? How can you reduce this calculation, but not affect the chromatogram so it's indistinguishable unless you get the raw data to see what the integration parameters are? And it's actually surprisingly really simple. What you're going to do is go into integration. You're going to go into integration events. Then you're going to go down here and you're going to select and you're going to add two levels of integration uh, that goes along with it. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to add two different uh, levels, which is right here and right there. And they're both called baseline now. And so what you're doing is you're saying, I want during these periods of time, wherever you set up those two parameters, that you're going to do baseline adjusting only for those two areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the end propanol because if we remember it's the end propanol that that's where we have that um, where we have that change that we're looking at and when we go there what we're going to do is the first line we're going to set and we're going to go over here and we're going to say you know what in the end propanol we're going to decrease it by starting there and then ending there. Let's just make sure that it's perfect. There, and there. And so what you're doing when we zoom in and we take a look at it in the future that's here is that we take a look at the integration events. What we've done by adding those in the table there is that we've added the extra parameters and what it's doing is saying, okay, drop a line down to there, that's where we're starting, drop a line right there, so it has the practical effect of what we did just a step ago, but then when you hit this, if you stop right here, you're going to be able to tell because when you go into uh, the print report, the telltale sign that someone Jimmy with this is going to be in the chromatogram itself because you have those two little symbols right there that say, hey, I did something during those parameters, and as you can see, what you did is you moved the 05 to a 0.16. So you say to yourself, okay, I can still catch them. But this is where it becomes really mischievous. If you close the uh, integration event menu, those marks disappear. You go to print report. If you just rely strictly on the chromatogram, those telltale signs, there's no sideways mark, there's no baseline, there's no uh, integration parameters that are programmed in there. It looks no different than the one that reported in 05. I'll show you, and we'll put a comparison that's right there in the second page. But the most important thing is, right now we're saying it's a point, uh, 106. So you're above the 0 0.05 BAC. And let's see if we can't do this. If we go into and take a look at chromatogram from the first page. And this over 
the side. We go back to our original data that's here, and we go back to our integration events. We get rid of our two artificial ones that we added in there. We hit integrate with this. And then we go back to the report, and we're back to page one. Identical, and then page two, it says in 05. So you won't be able to tell based solely without the raw data the difference in the chromatograms that are there in the printed reporting unless you have this information that's here and the integration events that are there. And that's not something that's going to print out. So I just showed you a way that you can catch people that are moving the BAC up or down, but then another way that most, uh, the most scary and chilling way is that you can manipulate the data, and if you only take a look at the printed reporting instead of the raw data, you won't be able to tell.